What's going on, the C Nation? Happy New Year, and welcome to the first podcast of the year 2020. Welcome to episode 90. And since this is episode 90, you know the show notes will be at wethesalesengineers.com slash show 90. Thanks again for being here. Thanks again for choosing to spend your time with me. I really appreciate it. And maybe I should lift this up a little bit so you you can see the top of my head. There we go. So before we start, I want to invite people in general to a couple of different things. So I'm doing webinars more regularly right now. Um, Hopefully, at least for the foreseeable future, I'm planning on doing more more webinars. And this Wednesday, which is in two days, uh, I'll be talking about fixing up your resume and LinkedIn while applying for jobs and how to find the best opportunities. If you're listening to this before then, then uh, feel free to join. You can sign up to it at wethesalesengineers.com slash webinar or click on the webinar button. The second thing is if you're listening to this on Monday, I will be going on YouTube Live. I will be joined by Peter Cohan. Uh, we're launching the first annual demo. So check out my YouTube channel. Uh, make sure that you can join. If you can't join today, we have another session on next Monday. I'll be joined by Brian Jiri. So it'll be a panel of three people for this uh, hopefully annual demo challenge. So as for today's topic, what I really want to talk about is demonstrations, uh, as you can tell by the title. And more specifically, I want to talk about why we demo. I'm not going to be talking about framework or how to demo, just the why. Because I don't want, for those who are going to be participating in the demo challenge, I don't want to change the way you do things. I want to see the way you do them now and provide critique at some point at a later date. But I want to talk about why. And I'm going to provide some food for thought about this subject. But before we talk about why, I'd like to mention a few reasons why we don't demo, or what the few reasons the demos are not for, more specifically. So um, actually, there are five reasons. And I will start with the first one, obviously. And this may be controversial, but this is what I believe. So uh, if you believe something different, make sure you leave it in the comments section. Uh, We can start a discussion about it, because that's how we learn. So we are not demoing to sell. That usually comes after. I know people will argue that we're always trying to sell the ABC, always be closing, whatever it is, or ABS, always be selling. But I don't believe it's true. Even like everything we do can lead to a sale or can break a sale. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we're not trying to sell, but the purpose of the demo is not to sell on the spot. And again, if you think differently, uh, leave a comment below or ping me. We can or go on uh, WeDSC's forum. I will start a, I will start a blog, or not a blog, a thread about that specifically. So that's the first reason, we're, or the first non-reason. We're not demoing to sell at this point. The second thing is we're not demoing to show the customer how easy it is to use the product or to configure the product. Some customers care about that. Many customers care about that. But most customers don't generally have to play around as much as we think with the product. They usually set it up once and forget it. They may have to tweak it here and there. Just as a quick example, in the networking world, so I'm, I'm from the networking world, customers usually have a professional come in and do some configurations on their routers. So if you're hearing someone screaming, that's my son. He is full of energy, and that's the way he, he depletes it. So it's a win-win. Um, but let's say Verizon Wireless buys a network from any company, Cisco, Nokia, whatever it is. Generally speaking, they buy the, the service to provide the design of what they need to configure on the routers. And then they get these configurations, and they never touch the routers again unless there's something wrong. They may monitor it but they never touch it. So if you're doing a demo to Verizon Wireless, as an example, they don't really care how you configured it. They don't care how long it took, how easy it was. They just care that it's working. You have 
the 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 reason they're buying the product is not to configure it, is to have phone calls pass through the network, to have uh, customers who want to access NFL.com or ESPN.com be able to access it. That's what they care about. They don't care about how easy it is to configure. Also, we are not demoing to show the customer how to use the product or to train them on the product. In many cases, a lot of people that we demo for are not the ones who are actually gonna be hands-on on the product. Uh, if you're selling high enough in the stack, like to the C levels or director levels, they're not the ones coming in and actually doing any, any of this. So we're not training them how to do it. If you wanna train, training is usually paid for by the customer and one to two hour demo, unless it's a very simple product, is not enough time to train anybody on it. And the fact of the matter is, they might be demoing three or four other solutions. They're not gonna receive training on every solution that they might not buy. So that happens afterwards as well. Something that I found is that we are not demoing, so that's the four non-reason to demo is, we are not demoing to get our sales guy off our back. Sales guys are demanding. And in some cases they're controlling. They do have more at risk than we do as sales engineers. And generally speaking, if the funnel's healthy, everyone's doing their job, there isn't that conflict, but if the funnel's running dry and the account manager is getting desperate, <clears throat> they will start asking the SEs to do things that we don't really want to do. And in a lot of cases, SEs just do them to get the account manager off their back or just because they have nothing better to do, which is a totally different story. But I, I've, I've seen account, uh, SEs do things just to appease their account managers. And I've had a colleague who was demoing left and right without even knowing why. Like, what's the problem we're trying to solve? Why is a customer gonna buy? Why are we doing this for this specific customer? And they just did it because they wanted to help the, the account manager out. They want to keep him happy. But in the end, it did not help. Neither the sales guy nor the SE made their quota. They have a combined, like they share the same quota. So they didn't get their number. And in the end, doing the demo took, took time away from doing the stuff that actually matters, like finding opportunities. And once, the, so that, that SE was kind of new to the role. He didn't know how to deal with that. But once he got the hang of it and figured out what he needs to do, what his role is, he was able to advise his account manager on when to demo and when not to demo. Not all account managers know that. Some account managers think that, and SEs as well, it's not just account manager thing. Some SEs and account managers think, hey, the customer asked for a demo, we're gonna do a demo. I've seen, I've witnessed SEs offer free demo licenses for customers without a demo plan, uh, <clears throat> without any idea if they're gonna buy, committing their time, without any commitment from the customer on the other end, which is not the way it's supposed to work. But once this SE started advising the account manager, um, their relationship got a lot better. They were able to focus on what's important. And the fifth reason, or fifth non-reason to demo, is to show the features that we think are cool. I, I used to have a colleague who was in love with the product. And that's a good thing. You're selling something that you're in love with. But everything was cool. Everything was great. Oh, this feature is amazing. This feature is going to blow your socks off. And that's how he would talk to the customer. Like, I'm going to show you something amazing right now. The issue was the customer's enthusiasm did not match his enthusiasm about the product. Now, the product was the SE's life. He loved it. The customer was just a tool, or for the customer, the product was just a tool to help them get through the day. Features did not help them get through the day. What the features solved could, but the focus was not on the solution. The fo focus was on the feature. Like, this button is amazing. This will do you click this button and it will list all the routes for example in the networking world all the routes that you have on your route table okay 
what does that mean? Nothing. Then the account, then the customer will have to think about if it does anything for them. And in most cases, in a demo, the customer is not going to think about that. The customers, some customers don't even want to be there. They were forced to be there by their managers and the CEOs and all that. All right, so we covered why we do not demo. Why do we demo? In my mind, there are three reasons to demo. And if you think there are more, put them in the comments below. Um, if you want to, if you feel like you can clarify a little bit more about the different reasons, by all means, do that as well. But in my mind, the three reasons we would demo is one, to show how our product or solution saves the customer time. Like instead of taking you five hours to do this thing, now it takes you three hours. So you just save three, two man hours, which save you X amount of money. And that's the second thing that, the second reason we demo is to show the customer that our solution saves them money. If we don't save time or money, it'll be very difficult for us to sell the product. I mean, why would they buy? Would you buy anything that will, and I'm talking about big things. I'm not talking about like a, an iPad or or an i iWatch, whatever it's called. I'm talking about big like houses or cars. Would you buy a, a house just because it's cool? If, if, you, if you, it's not providing you any, any additional function, then well, maybe that's a bad example, but would you buy a software that it will not add any value to you, either save you time or save you money? For example, there's like open office or Libra office that's free that you can use. People who don't want to pay for Microsoft office will use that. However, Microsoft Office, if that can show that it will, it's easier to use, it will make their life easier, which is the third product, the third, third reason why people would buy it, make their lives easier, no one's going to buy uh, Microsoft Office. And a lot of people do buy it, and a lot of people don't, because it's not worth the money, in their opinion. And again, uh, the value is subjective. And when, I t when I talk about how the product makes the customer's life easier. And if it doesn't save them time or money, that's still a possibility that they can still buy. Maybe it provides a little bit more information that they would need. Um, they didn't think it would, they would need it, but they would need it. Or maybe it's more intuitive. Like it takes the same amount of time to configure something. It's just now you, your brain doesn't hurt as much by the end of it. That could be a reason, a little, a little bit harder to sell, but these are still reasons. So again, uh, the why we demo is to show how our product or solution saves the customer time, saves the customer money, or saves the customer some headache, more reliable, uh, it will not break as much, which in the end costs, saves them time and money, or like easier to use. Or, or the information that they would get from it is easier to digest, that sort of thing. So how does this help us? Well, we now have a goal. We have not just a goal for the demo of what we need to show, we have a goal for the discovery. And so when we're asking questions about the discovery, we don't just focus on the speeds and feeds in the networking world or if you're selling a SaaS, how many users are going to log in or how much data is going to be ingested? Because these you can figure out later, but why do they want to buy this new product? Why are they thinking about it? Why do they need it? And if you're going to talk about speeds and feeds, well, guess what? Usually, in most cases, the competitors have the exact speeds and feeds. For the for the customer or licenses or whatever it is that you end up putting on the quota or bill of materials or proposal, and they may have a cheaper price. So now, instead of talking about solutions, you're going into a price war with a competitor, who could, in many cases, go cheaper than you. 
So we need to know why the customer is even talking to us, why they have asked us to come in and meet with them or agree to meet when our salespeople ask for it. Customers don't like meeting with salespeople, especially new ones. Like if you have a report, if you've built your relationship, that's a different story. But if there's a brand new salesperson, people are weary of salespeople, unfortunately. When I go to a car dealership, and I'm not comparing salespeople to car dealers, I've, I've worked with a few car dealers or car salespeople who were very nice, but I am weary of them as well. And the thing about this is when you go talk to customers, in most cases, what they want to talk about is the speeds and feeds. Um, you may have to pry a little bit to figure out what the business problem is. If they don't want to share that information, we have to find a way to get them to share that information, whether it's us or the account manager. We are a team in the end. And it could be through sharing stories. Like we've worked with a similar company that had this sort of issue. Does this resonate or whatever it is? Or, or it could be through building rapport. Like, all right, let's talk about the speeds and fees, but let's try to build that relationship, go out and lunch. It might not happen with one, that, one setting. That's the thing about sale, uh, discovery. In my case, discovery sometimes takes two or three meetings. And I'm lumping qualification into that discovery because some I used to be involved in a lot of qualifications because my account manager didn't know the technology, so I had to do that. But I used to have the qualification call, and then I have a couple of other calls with the with the team. And this changes from uh, industry to industry. If your solution is simple, then you might not need so much. My solution is complicated, and I have different experts that I can bring in. And I use the first meeting, or there's the qualification meeting, and then I use the first discovery meeting to get the customer to envision himself using a solution that would work for him. And then I'd I bring in the experts for the third meeting to actually get it to the bottom of, get all the information that we need to create, to do a demo that's useful for them. So if we can provide a solution to the customer that shows that there will be a return, then we've done our job as sales engineers. For me, at least, if I don't do that, I always wonder if I missed something, I left something on the table, why didn't they buy from me? Was it just price? Why was price the big issue here? Can I, can I have shown them value a little bit better? Like if they tell me, hey, I need a 100 gig port, I tell them, all right, here's the price for our 100 gig port. Did I really do my job? Do they really need a sales engineer at this point? Can't they just get that information online? In my case, they can't, but in many cases, they can. So I would love to know what you guys think about this. What are the reasons you see to demo or not or non-reasons to demo? So share those in the comments section. Uh, put them on YouTube, wherever it is that you're listening to this. Just let's start this conversation. So that's it for the meat of the podcast. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe on whichever podcast player of your choice. Uh, or share it with other SEs that might find it interesting. Um, as a side note, I have many uh, aspiring SEs reaching out to me and asking me for help. And I'm doing the best I can to help as many as I can. But I decided to do it, to do this in a formalized manner going forward. So I'm launching a course. If you're an aspiring SE or you're in between jobs and struggling to find a job, um, this course is meant to help you like with your resume uh, through understanding what should be on the resume and reviewing it for you, uh, doing practicing interviews and practicing demos. Uh, if this is something that's interesting for you. Reach out to me at we the sales engineers.com slash show uh, or actually just Ramsey at we the sales engineers.com. There is no show involved in there. So reach out to me, let me know. Uh, there's only 20 spots that I'm gonna be doing live and they're not all available at this point. So if this is interesting to you, please reach out to me as soon as possible. Um, I will talk to you guys next week. With that, this is Ramsey signing off. <laughs>